Gravity the Ghost! Hey guys, it's Gravity the Ghost, and welcome to Spiritified! The series where we look at characters from various game worlds that are not spirits in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and try to create battle scenarios to stimulate what their spirit battle would be like in the game. Think of this as something like, uh, Arts the Omni's Smashified, but with spirits instead. The way that we do this is that I show you what their spirit screen would look like, including their spirit type and battle conditions. Then after that, we battle it out using these rules. Today's theme is going to be Pokemon Trainers. Because, you know, uh, for some reason there aren't any trainers as spirits in Smash. I mean, yeah, the Pokemon are just, like, super important to, well, the Pokemon series, but the Pokemon Trainers are also important. I mean, we've had Pokemon Trainer trophies in Smash before, so why not any spirits? So that's why I'm going to be making some. All right, let's do some soul searching. The first spirit we have here is Charon and Bianca from Pokemon Black and White. Well, specifically, this art is from Pokemon Black and White. So, the, what I decided to do is that have the characters represent Marth and Daisy for Charon and Bianca. Uh, the conditions for this battle is that the items are drawn to the enemy, and uh, the items that spawn are only item boxes to represent how... Uh, in the game, when, it, when you start Pokemon Black and White, uh, you, Charon, and Bianca get your starter Pokemon via presents, via uh, Pokeballs and a present. And luckily, on the Tomodachi Life stage, the item boxes show up as presents, which is perfect. Uh, and also, I have it set to the Pokemon special moves are more powerful. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get this uh, battle started. Next up is Cynthia from the Pokemon series. She is the champion in the, in the Generation 4 games of Pokemon Pearl, Diamond, and Platinum. She'll be represented by Rosalina and Luma in her black dress, and she has backup using Ridley in his blue costume to represent Garchomp. Uh, basically, this is a pretty strong battle. You gotta take your strongest team in the Snow Frills battle. It's very tough to battle, trust me. Uh, I've had to do multiple takes of this battle. And also, your opponent has a slight chance of landing a critical hit, which is um, she's a champion, so she's gotta she's gotta be strong. So uh, yeah, uh, let's get straight to the battle.
Next up is Ascentia from Pokemon X and Y. You probably don't remember this character as she's from the post game of the, uh, the Looker episodes. Uh, she was basically this player character and uh, she kind of found herself in the role of working for Team Flare uh, accidentally. Anyways, I won't spoil the rest, but basically she's going to be represented by Black Samus uh, with the yellow uh, energy, uh, which actually really fits extremely well with this character. Uh, so the, the conditions for this one is that the enemy has higher jump power and the enemy's kicking attacks are stronger. Uh, why, you say? Well, uh, go watch that uh, Go watch this Pokemon Generations episode. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we're going to get straight to the battle. It's going to be fun. Next up, the mob boss himself, Giovanni, from Pokemon Red, Blue, pretty much any Generation 1 game. He's going to be represented by Snake in his black outfit, and he'll have a Mewtwo as backup that can temporarily, it will temporarily be made of metal, which is representative of the, uh, the Pokemon anime where, you know, Mewtwo has had this, like, big old metal suit on to amplify his powers. Also, fire and explosion attacks aren't as effective. Uh, the... <laughs> It's kind of the thing of like uh, when Mewtwo blew up the, the, the research lab in the movie. But let's see how it looks. Next up is one that I had a lot of fun with, the Kimono Girls from Pokemon Gold and Silver. They all have like evolutions, but I wanted just to represent them in themselves, so I decided to use all of the female characters that wear dresses, Peach, Daisy, Rosalina, Zelda, and Palutena, all in their red outfits to represent their the red kimonos that the, that the Kimono Girls wear. And uh, there's really nothing else about this, just fighting on Newport City on the Omega form. Uh, let's do the battle.
Next up is the Masked Royal from Pokemon Sun and Moon. This guy is going to be represented by Incineroar on the boxing ring stage. The only conditions for this battle is that the enemy's throws are much more powerful than normal. This one was a fun one to do as well, <laughs> because I am a huge fan of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, it's my favorite generation, so I decided to do this one as a shout out to that. Professor Birch, this will be represented by Dr. Mario and you'll be fighting on the final destination form of Gower Plain. However, the condition is that you lose if your ally is KO'd, which is a Duck Hunt. It'll be in the darker, the darker fur Duck Hunt costume, which is supposed to represent Poochetta. As in the beginning of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, there's a Poochiana that's chasing Professor Birch. And that's how you get your starter, to help him help him uh, faint the Poochiana. And so because of this, the <laughs> Dr. Mario's move speed is much faster because he's trying to run. However, he's still going to end up trying to hit Poochiana. But yeah, I thought it was really fun making this battle. Uh, let's see how it looked. Next up is the Ultra Recon Squad from Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Ah, uh -huh, this one was really fun. I decided to use a, a team of Roths for this battle. The reason is because if you play Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, you can see that uh, the way that these characters move is very stiff and robotic. Uh, you can especially tell when they try to do the Aloha uh, gesture. Uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, the enemy's jump is floatier, just to represent, you know, they're from space and all that stuff. And also, the enemy starts the battle with a Beast Ball. Now, I know technically it's not like the actual Beast Ball from Pokemon, but it's something close. It's a little bit of a reference. Uh, <laughs> and we'll be playing on Spirit Pillar, which is the closest resemblance to uh, Altar of the Sun and Moon. Hopefully, this is going to be a little fun battle. It's a little hard, too.
Next up is another Pokemon champion, this time from Pokemon Emerald, Wallace. He's going to be represented by Corrin in his green outfit. It's kind of like a palish green blue. And the only conditions for this battle is that the enemy's water and ice attacks are more powerful, which is uh, Corrin's uh, neutral beat. And all this will be played on uh, Kalos Pokemon League. Let's start the battle. Last but not least, though by far the most famous Pokemon trainer, it's Red! He's going to be represented by the Pokemon trainer. This enemy also has backup, which is Pikachu, which obviously is Red's most famous Pokemon. Uh, and <laughs> they'll be playing on the fi on Battlefield form of Summit, which is represented of Mount Silver. The other conditions is that the enemy's fire and explosion attacks are stronger. The enemy's water and ice attacks are stronger, and the enemy's electric attacks are stronger. So basically, uh, you're gonna have a rough time if you don't have uh, if you don't have a strong enough spirit. In fact, when I was trying to record their battle, uh, even I had to use like a super powerful defensive spirit to try to beat them. It was that hard. I uh, I went a little too far. <laughs> let's see. Let's see how it went. that's all the time we have for this episode of Spiritified. I hope you guys enjoy what you watch and all the little references I made with these mock spirit battles. If you enjoy this and you want to see more episodes of the series, leave a like and comment down a series that you'd like for me to cover in the future. Also subscribe to the channel for more fun content on Nintendo and gaming in general. This has been Gravity Ghost and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. See ya!